I våra dagar är det nog bara slagrutegubbar som letar efter sådant vi inte normalt kan uppfatta. Bland klosterruinerna i urgamla Glastonbury, kristendomens kanske tidigaste fest i Europa, ska vi träffa en modern slagruteman, Tom Graves. Oh, what's that? What's happening? I'm dowsing. I'm looking if, in fact for uh, a, probably a wall or some kind of structure. There's a whole line of what seems like a wall shape here. I'm not quite sure. It'll take a lot more, more to look at it. As you can see the abbey behind here, there are quite a lot of places already marked out that have been marked out by usual means, by digging. And the advantage of dowsing here is that you don't actually have to dig until you're very sure of what you're doing. Is this uh, something uh, connected with how uh, people in older days found water? Yes. Um, water, I suppose, is still the most common use. And around this area, where the geology is quite a mess, dowsers have always been active in looking for water. Uh, and mining, too, is the other application that a lot of people have and used it for in the past. Mm. Though there's rather less need of it nowadays. Um, and it, it takes uh, a pair of rods like that? Well, we do, I tend to use coat hangers. Nothing complicated. Anything will do. All these are just doing are just levers to tell me what my hands are doing. So if I move my hand very slightly, the rod moves a lot. If you like, the whole thing's just coincidence. Um, what I'm doing is I'm using the rods, or if you like, my reaction to a place, to mark the coincidence between what I'm looking for and where I am. Same sort of thing, just to show you again. If I say I'm looking for a wall, let's say, Come in. I'm expecting them to cross over. That'll do. Now, if I'm looking, I can change the rules. I can decide that, that it's rather like changing the program on a computer. So I can come towards you, and I'm looking for the edge. Now I can follow along the edge. You see? Oh, this is fantastic. I mean, uh, have uh, archaeologists uh, realised what use they can have? They have. Um, it's used from time to time, mostly in, in early parts of surveys. The problem is that it all depends on how, how good you are, uh, and a lot of people, well, like any skill, it takes a lot of practice. So it's not a gift, then? As far as I'm concerned, anyone can do it. Whether they want to is another matter, but anyone can. Um, as for its use, really it's just one of a batch of tools, one of many tools like um, radio, radio scanning equipment. And for a lot of physical survey work, those tools are probably better. But in, the, uh, in more routine applications, uh, looking for, say, a pipe, a lot of pipes nowadays are plastic, mm. so you can't use a metal detector. And something like this comes in handy then. Is that really proved? Oh, yes, it's a useful tool. I mean, fairly routine. It's, it's used quite a lot, I suppose. So you can even tell us now, without digging, how deep the, this wall is? I'll have a try. Again, changing the rules. If we come up and look at it, let's see if we can find the edge again. Hang on, getting a bit lost. Try again. Right, so that's the edge. Right, now what we can do that now is say, right, from the, dis the distance out from where I am is the distance down. So let's have a look. It'll be the same reaction. All I've done is change the rules. That's about there. So, if we go back, it's one, about four metres. Whatever it is, it may actually, may actually be a, a line of water. Yeah. I mean, check, check it by following the line of it. A line of water is likely to, to bend a lot, and a, a wall edge is likely to be straight, or fairly straight. So let's pick that up, follow along the edge. If I keep them slightly squinted, slightly crossed over, and I'm following on the line. It's straight. Ah, that's probably an edge. If you look here, if I come at it from the other side, I'm getting that, which it's suggests an edge, a corner. It's a, a corner. corner. A corner. So if we come at it from the other side again, Following along that one. And it's pretty much straight. And there's some other edge there. 
there by the feel of it. Okay, so we can use these to check the edge. Right, like that, that'll do. Right? Well, can in fact be a bit more precise. This one's a, called a pendulum. Pendulum. It's just a little ring on a string, that kind of thing. So we put those down there. Like so, the odd character in Tintin. That's right, yes, exactly the same as calculus, yes. Yeah. Right? And going round when we get to the edge. So come back off again. We can be a bit more precise. But I mean, are you not moving your head now? I suppose I am, but it's rather like riding a push bike, riding a bicycle, in that, in the sense you, you're, you're, you are actually controlling the whole thing, and in the same sense you're actually not controlling it at all. You're deciding where you want to go. So you're setting it up as a set of reflexes, a set of responses. So if we look at here again, we're setting up the rules in the same way as we did with the rods, right? Get a bit more close. To move my foot actually mark where I am. I go forwards until it stops. Come are, back many, again. are many people doing this in England? A few. I mean, it, as I said, it's nothing special. It's a tool. Um, quite a few researchers are using it, I suppose. Particularly in the... Particularly around standing stones, that kind of area, where there are connections between the traditional views of water. Of, uh, um, there are other places where people will find that water converges underneath a standing stone or a church altar. You get lines of water coming in, twisting around, and going out again. That's the image, that's what people are seeing. So we tend to find dowsing used more in that kind of area rather than in conventional archaeology. Its use in, in archaeology is just another survey tool. But uh, what is that if the Holy Grail is hidden somewhere here? Will you find it? Uh, I think it's a little more elusive than that.